Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good.
Silence the boast of sin and grave. Good morning, Kingwood. We're glad you're here today, gathered with us in our online worship. I'd like to encourage you to uh, make a comment on Facebook or YouTube, whatever media you're watching on, and let us know that you're here. It's always encouraging to see those comments. Uh, today's theme is finding peace in Jesus. Uh, let's start with a prayer and then we'll see. Father in heaven, we just ask you simply one thing today, and that is that you open our hearts, you open our minds, that we may learn and feel and experience the peace that is available through your son, Jesus Christ. And it's through him we pray. Amen. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again.
As we prepare for communion this morning, I want us to think just for a minute about symbols. We live in a world full of symbols. I could show you a bunch of different symbols and right away you can tell me what they mean. You think about a stop sign. Even without the word stop there, if you've got that red octagon, you know what that means, right? Um, what about a peace sign? If you see a peace sign somewhere, you know what it represents and what it means. Um, all sorts of social media, emojis now are everywhere. There are symbols for everything in our culture. Um, we even have symbols in Christianity. You think about the Jesus fish. Um, whenever you see that on a bumper um, or whatever, wherever it is, you know what that represents. Um, you think about crosses. You see people wear them on necklaces. It's a symbol um, to remind us of what Jesus did for us. As Jesus' life was coming to an end, he chose two simple symbols, two simple things uh, to remind us of him. Bread and juice. Those are two things that are in most of our lives from a very young age. I think about our 10-month-old Levi. One of his first non-baby food things, table food things, was a piece of toast that we broke up for him and let him eat. Um, now, one of his favorite things is prune juice, believe it or not. Um, he loves prune juice and can drink it up. Um, but even from a young age, we are around bread and juice. And so that's why I love that Jesus chose those as symbols to remind us of him. Um, so when you take communion on Sundays, remember what Jesus did for you. But when you eat bread at any meal, or when there's juice out at breakfast, think about what Jesus did for you. Remember, be reminded by these symbols of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Remember that on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it, he took juice and drank it, and said, do this and remember me. Let's pray for the bread. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us. Father, we're thankful for these symbols that you've given us, these simple things of bread and juice, things that are in our lives every day, but they remind us of what you've done for us. God, help us to remember today about your body that was broken for us. But God, help us to remember it not just today, but every day. Help us to be reminded of what Jesus did for us and the sacrifice he made. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let's pray for the cup as well. Father in heaven, we thank you for um, the symbols of, of bread and fruit of the vine that uh, remind us of things. Father, the the uh, cup that's before us that reminds us of the blood of Jesus. Uh, we thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for the washing of our sins away because of that blood. Uh, we, we remember you now and we thank you. Thank you, Father, for that. Mr. Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we wrap up um, this time of communion, this is usually when baskets would be around, passed around the church. Um, and we just want to remind you that even though um, there's so much going on in the world. The church is still at work, that we are the church, um, and we're still trying to do things. Kingwood is trying to bless other people. Um, so if you have a chance to just remember to give us that giving, um, either online, either by bringing it to the church office and dropping it off um, with us there, or mailing it in, any of those ways are totally fine. Um, that really will just help us to continue the kingdom work and continue to reach out and to serve those um, in Murfreesboro and around the world um, as we live for God, live for Jesus. When peace like a
Good morning, church family. Thanks for joining us today. I hope that you've enjoyed the worship so far. Before I get into the message this morning, I just want to thank you for being who you are. Uh, I've been so impressed at how you've embraced these uncertain times, how you've responded to the things that we've been asking you to do, uh, whether it be following us on Facebook or YouTube or watching this stream and worshiping at home, uh, whether it's been giving online or dropping your uh, check up here or, or by mail. Uh, the way you have embraced this uncertain time has been a great blessing in my life and in the life of our church. And I just want to encourage you today before we get into our message to keep on keeping on, to keep persevering because God is going to continue to see us through. So thank you for being who you are. Uh, I miss you. We all miss each other. Uh, again, this week I'm in an empty auditorium and it's just weird. It's just different. Uh, but can you imagine with me just for a minute what that Sunday is going to be like when we come back here, all of us, for the first time? I mean, I hope that we'll have to raise the roof literally because of our singing, because of our praise. I can't wait for that day. I pray that it's sooner rather than later, but only God knows when that's going to be right now, right? Right. So bear with us, stay with us, and thank you so much for being who you are. We love you, and we're so encouraged by you. So we kind of changed up our Jesus 2020 thing. Uh, my normal routine schedule that I put together for this year would really have me preaching through the Sermon on the Mount right now. And we're going to get to that when we come back. But in these weeks of uncertainty, I want to continue to look at some Jesus stories, some things that we find about him uh, in relation to a couple of different themes. Last week, we focused our attention and our minds on faith. This week, we're going to talk about finding peace in Jesus. If you noticed, a lot of the songs that we sang this morning uh, and continue to sing this morning are songs of peace and real everlasting peace is only found in Jesus Christ. So I want to share three passages of Scripture with you today, all coming from the Gospels, uh, all coming from the life of Jesus, uh, all things that Jesus said uh, while he was here on earth. And then I want to break those passages down by looking at seven things very briefly that the peace of Jesus won't do and what the peace of Jesus will do. Before we begin, let's bow in prayer. Father God, open our hearts and our minds to your word this morning. May we find the peace that passes all understanding through you and your Son and the Spirit. Be with us as we study this morning. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The first passage of Scripture I want to look at with you this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 16 and verse 33. Jesus is speaking to his disciples here in John 16, 33. And here is what he said to them. He said, I have told you these things, and watch this, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, Jesus could have easily said to his disciples here, take heart. Because in this world, you will never have any trouble because I am with you. Or he could have said to them, since you are following me, since you are preaching and teaching my word, since you're going to be my ambassadors here on earth, I'm going to give you a peace that exempts you from all trials, from all tribulations, and from all troubled circumstances. But he did not say that. In John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus says... In this world, you will have trouble. Notice what he did not say. He did not say in this world, there is a chance you will have trouble. He did not say in this world, you might have trouble. He actually said in this world, you will. That is a definitive statement. You will have trouble but take heart, because I have overcome the world. The second passage of Scripture that I want you to see in finding peace with Jesus is in John chapter 14, verse 27. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, 
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Second time that Jesus says to his disciples to be at peace. In John 16, he said, I've told you all these things so that you'll have peace. And take heart, he's overcome the world. In John 14, 27, he says, my peace I leave with you. I give it to you. And notice this, he does not give it as the world gives. You see, there is something different about the peace that Jesus brings and about the peace that Jesus gives us. I, I would suppose that if you're not a believer in Christ, you could have a sense of peace about life. You could be a peaceful person. You could even potentially be a peacemaker. But there is still something different about the peace that Jesus gives you than what the world gives us. And we're going to look at that a little bit later. And then in Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30, and this is the passage of scripture that uh, was read to us this morning in our children's moment. It says, come to me. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, come to me if you're weary. Come to me if you're burdened and I will give you rest. That sounds like an incredible amount and type of peace. A peace that says, if you will just come to me, as we talked about last week, if you'll just get to Jesus, good things are going to happen. Remarkable things are going to happen. Here, Jesus says, if you'll just come to me, I will give you rest. You can take my yoke upon you. You can learn from me. And I will give you rest. I will give you this peace that will help you navigate through whatever storms in life you face. I love the word yoke in that passage. The word yoke is a, a term that, that is it's used, the, the tool is used to unite animals in a common work. That's what a yoke is or was during those days. It was a, a, uh, a tool that united animals for, the common, for a common work. Well, here, when we take the yoke of Jesus upon us, we are uniting ourselves with him. And when we unite ourselves with him, we're given this rest. We're given this peace. We're given this opportunity to cast our burdens and lay those on Jesus. Three different passages this morning talks about the peace and the rest, the comfort that can be found only in Jesus. And we are certainly, as we think about the peace of Jesus this morning, we are certainly in some uncertain, uncharted waters and uncertain times that we need to hold on to this peace. So what will the peace of Jesus do and what will it not do? Well, let me go through some things it won't do to begin with. And here's the first one. The peace of Jesus won't exempt you from trouble. Nowhere in the story of Jesus does Jesus ever say, if you just hang on to me, if you just trust me, if you just believe in me, you will never have trouble. The peace of, of Jesus does not mean that we are exempt from trouble. Every single one of us, regardless of, of gender, race, nationality, background, uh, no matter how much money we have in the bank, what kind of cars we drive or don't drive, no matter how large or small our houses are, no matter how many fam family members we have, none of us are ever exempt from trouble. The peace of Jesus does not exempt us from trouble. Here's the second thing that it won't do. It won't guarantee your health and prosperity. Now, I wish it would. I wish it would because that way no Christian would ever get coronavirus. All of those, all we'd have to do to inoculate ourselves to, 
to this virus that is ravaging our world and our country today is to just trust in Jesus. But trusting in Jesus won't guarantee our health and prosperity here on earth. We may still get a virus. We may still get this virus. We may still get very sick. We may still have some financial difficulties that come our way, either through this crisis or some other crisis that's coming. The peace of Jesus won't guarantee our health and our prosperity. Here's the third thing that it won't do. It won't make our problems disappear. You know, every one of us had problems before this virus hit. The virus has complicated life. The virus has brought us into an uncertain times where our problems may be magnified. Uh, the virus has come into our lives and may actually cause other problems for us that we didn't have before this hit. The bottom line is the peace of Jesus won't make those problems just magically disappear and go away. Again, Jesus said, in this world, you'll have trouble. He didn't say you might. He didn't say it's a possibility. He said, you're going to have trouble. And we're facing troubles right now. This whole country, this whole world is facing troubles. Having the peace of Jesus won't make those troubles and make those problems disappear. But let me share with you very quickly four things that we'll do. The first is that it will quiet your hearts. It will quiet your hearts. You know, I was sitting at home this week and I flipped on the news and I watched some of the reports about the coronavirus and, and I'm trying to do the best I can to, to get all the information I can possibly get. Uh, I want to read about it. I want to study about it. I want to see when the curve's flattening. I want to see what parts of the country uh, are being affected. And, and part of that is as being in the position that I find myself in today, it gives me the opportunity to minister to you, to, to know what to do and, and how to reach out to you and to encourage you. Uh, and I was sitting at home watching it the other day and you know, I, I guess I got discouraged. I got frustrated. I felt a little anxiety start to creep in, uh, particularly when they started talking about death rates and what the death rate may be for our country and, and how long this might last. And I had just a little bit of anxiety creeped in. And as it creeped in, I decided, you know, let's turn the TV off for a minute. Let's just have a quiet moment. Let's just have a moment where it's me and God. And when I did that, I felt that voice of God kind of come over me saying, just, just trust in me. Just hold on. Let me give you some peace about this situation. And all of a sudden, it quieted my heart. The anxiety that I felt was gone. The discouragement I felt was gone. The peace of Jesus has a way to just quiet our hearts. Put us at peace. Calm us down. Help us to relax a little bit. And here's the second thing it does. It provides us rest. We're burdened. We are weary. We get tired. But Jesus says, just come back to me and let me give you some rest. Let me carry those burdens for you. And let me give you the rest that I so desperately want to give you. Matthew 20, uh, the, the passage in Matthew that we looked at a few minutes ago that was read to us was a passage of scripture there in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, where Jesus says, come to me if you're burdened and I'll give you this rest. That's that peace that we're talking about. Here's the third thing that it will do. The peace of Jesus will carry your burdened soul. You know, our souls can get burdened in life. If it's not the virus, it may be a financial situation. If it's not a financial situation, it may be the health of a loved one, maybe a family situation. If it's none of those things, we may be spiritually burdened. We may have some sin in our life. We may have some guilt in our life. We may have some things happening in our lives at this very moment where we need Jesus to step in and say, let me give you some rest for your burdened soul. Let me carry those burdens for you. And that's what the peace of Jesus does. It helps us to carry our burdened soul. And then finally, it will teach us to say, it is well. You know, we sang that song just before the message, it is well with my soul. Great, great hymn. We've looked at that story of 
the individual that wrote it and the circumstances in which he wrote it under. But that is a great, that, that is a great song and a great story for us because we need to learn in all of our troubled times, whether it be a troubled time based on a virus or a financial condition or a spiritual condition, we need to learn and be able to say in our hearts and in our soul, it is well. And I don't know about you, but only the peace of Jesus, only the peace of Jesus can teach me to say it as well. The virus is here. The death toll climbs. The uncertainty lingers. We don't know what the future is going to hold, but we need to learn to say it is well. And it may not be well in our physical lives. Our, our bank accounts may not be as well, or the stock market may not be as well, the, the health that we experience or our family experiences may not be as well as it once was. But we can still say, it is well with my soul. So when Jesus comes and says, in this world you'll have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Find peace. When Jesus comes and says, my peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, and I don't give it as the world gives. And then when Jesus comes and says, come to me if you're weary, heavy burdened, take my yoke upon, upon you, learn from me, and I will give you rest. That's the kind of peace in this moment, in this time, in this crisis, that we need to be asking God for. Jesus is waiting to give you peace. And if you find yourself this morning in a state in your life where you don't feel at peace, maybe you just need to conversate with God. Maybe you just need to talk to God and say, God, I need this peace that Jesus gives. Or, or maybe you need to reach out to one of us and let us talk you through that and study with you and pray with you. If you're not a Christian, you need to become one. You need to do the things that the Bible has commanded you to do. To confess your sins and confess that he is Lord. And be buried in baptism for the forgiveness of those sins after you turn from those sins in repentance. Whatever your need is, let us know. We're here to help. Because we all want to experience the peace of Jesus. And we want to trust in the promises of what it will do. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the peace that is found in Jesus Christ. We know, Father, that this peace will not exempt us from trouble, but we know that that peace will calm our hearts, quiet our hearts, will carry our burdens. It will teach us to say it as well with our soul. And we want that peace today, Father. Help us to be people that seek that peace during this crisis and during these uncertain times. And thank you for making that peace possible by allowing Jesus to die on the cross to forgive us of sins, which brings us the greatest peace of all. And that is peace between you and us. It's in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I keep finding voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every I need to know. Oh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, Find my worth in 
in you I find my identity. Thank you for joining us uh, for our worship service today. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we pray that it's been beneficial for you and your family uh, worshiping from home. Uh, we pray that it brings you closer to God and Christ, and we pray it brings you, even though we're separated, it brings you closer to our family at Kingwood. We've faced many changes in the last few days and in the, in the last few weeks, uh, and we're going to face more changes as a, the coming weeks and, and maybe even in the coming months. But there's one thing that doesn't change, and that's God. And that's God and His Word. And from that we find peace, we find strength, we find courage, and we find comfort. Now I'd like to take us to a chapter in Isaiah, chapter 40, that gives us all of those things, and especially comfort, as we get to know God just a little better from Isaiah 40. Even in the first verse it says, Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. And then it goes on down to the fourth verse. And this should give us strength, comfort, and courage. It says, every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And then if we go to the end of that chapter chapter 40 in Isaiah, to the last three or four verses, we become even closer to God. And he says, beginning in verse 28, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases his strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. Let's study our word from God. Let's try to understand our God and move closer to him. Let's try to understand Christ and the sacrifice was made so that we might have eternal life. And then above all things, with the changes that we're seeing this day and in the coming weeks, 
Let's get comfort from our Lord Jesus Christ and from the Word of God. Let us bow as we close. Father, we thank you so much for God. We thank you for your Word. We thank you for the price that was paid on the cross of Calvary for our sins, that we might have opportunity for eternal life. Father, as we close out this service, we ask you to give us the strength and the courage and the comfort that we just read about. We ask you to be with all of our members, be with all those that have seen this service today, and help them, Father, with all the things that they might need help with. Father, we pray for our leaders at this point in time, and we pray that they'll make decisions. They'll make decisions based on God's word for the betterment of our country and our people. Father, be with us now and be with all those that need our prayers. Bless them in all their needs and let us follow you in everything that we do. And we pray this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus.